Assalamu alaikum viewers. Welcome back to our next English program. I hope you are benefiting from these programs and the lessons you watch on television. Today's program is on Mohenjo-daro, a topic chosen from our classical past. In today's program, we also have a very interesting documentary film and useful information about our cultural heritage, the Indus civilization. Also during the program, we'll have a talk by our renowned archaeologist, Dr. Ahmed Hassan Dani. Later in the program, we'll be asking you questions about the lesson. And in the end, we have language activity. But before demonstrating the details of the lesson, I would like to give you a brief account of the cities of Mohenjo-daro and Harappa. The cities were inhabited by highly cultured and socially aware people. While digging, the ruins revealed that during 2500 BC to 1500 BC, the people possessed a high standard of arts and craftsmanship and well-developed system of quasi-pictographic writing, which despite continuing efforts remained uninterpretable. Well, isn't that interesting? Well, that was just a brief account. Now I'll show you a film in which you'll watch in detail the lifestyle of the people of cities of Mohenjo-daro and Harappa. But be very careful, watch the film very careful, because after the film, I'll be asking you questions. So keep your notebooks and pencils ready for question-answer drill after the film. The word civilization dates back to the times when people attained the sense of living together in small groups and began to realize each other's problems. Among the other requisites for civilization, rivers have played the most important role. Through the rivers, people got the opportunity of fishing, growing crops, making baskets, mats and huts from the river reeds, and furthermore, traveling, trading, and hunting of birds. Some of the most ancient civilizations, such as Egyptian, started through River Nile, whereas Indus River helped the Indus civilization to grow. About 4,500 years ago, cities of Harappa and Mohenjo-daro were created. These were the centers of civilization of that time. The people who inhabited the Indus Valley were known as Dravidians. Indus civilization is the final stage of the Bronze Age civilization of Pakistan, the Indus land. Its beginning, the middle, and the mature phase can be studied in three different periods. The earliest is the formation of the village known at Mehargar, which began with the latest phase of the Stone Age when man began to produce food with stone tools. Then we come to the first building of the houses with mud bricks, the use of pottery, painting on pottery, tools made of bones and stones, and some of the bronze tools. The most important is the beginning of the human figurines, and also the use of seals without writing. This was the first period of village, not only seen in Mihargar, but also at Shirin Tarakke in the frontier province, and at Saraikhala near Taxila. The second stage in the development towards the Indus civilization is the beginning of the city life. 
the cities as attested at Kordiji, Rahman Deri, and many other places. These cities are all fortified. At this time, there is a land route connection between the Indus land and Central Asia through Bolan Pass, Kandahar, Herat, right up to Altin Tepe in Turkmenistan. Now we find much better type of painted pottery, better tools, and planned towns like Rahman Dairy, as you see in the photograph. Now we also find trade links, trading in precious stones, trading in the manufactured goods of this land with Central Asia, all by land route. But so far, there is no writing. Sometimes we do get a little standardization in weights and measures. Mohanjo-daro, meaning the mound of the dead, is one of the cities of the old Indus Valley. Being the largest busy city at that time, it was well populated. The ancient city remained hidden under the earth till 1922, when some people found some old pots and tools from the place where present Mohanjo-daro stands. Luckily, those important things were taken to Sir John Marshall, who was responsible for looking after the antiques and inheritances. He was himself very interested in preserving such precious assets. So he became anxious to find out more about these remains. He ordered excavations, as a result of which this city of ancient civilization was discovered. His team kept on digging deeper and deeper till finally the whole city appeared with its well-planned houses and straight roads. Mahanjadaro, a modern name which means Mound of the Dead, is in the Larkana district. And Harappa, which is an old name, originally called Hariupiya in Punjab. There is a big change from the second to the third stage because of the great trades routes developed at this time. So far it was land route connection. Now we have got both land route as well as sea route as shown by the building up and use of sea going vessels. At the same time, we find a change because now the civilization becomes literate. We have got writing, pictographic writing, showing symbols nearly 420. Then we get planned cities of Mahanjadaro and Harappa in Pakistan, in which we have got fortified cities, straight streets, cut by right angles. The whole city was skillfully designed. The houses were made of large baked bricks with bathrooms and servant quarters. Pipes went from the bathrooms and lavatories to drains under the street. Indeed, the brick buildings of the common people, the picture of people living happily in a community. Carts and other forms of transport had an easy access to the centre of the town, where the shops, along with the large shopping centre, were situated. There was nothing like this in the ancient world until some 2,000 years later. Grain was the chief crop, and it was used instead of money. The people who worked in the fields were paid in grains from the granaries, Apart from wheat, people also grew rice and cotton, which they used for trading with the people of neighboring civilizations. Mohanjo-daro people were skillful. They made things out of gold, silver, and ivory. 
they were expert in handicrafts, such as carving of wood, weaving and printing of cloth, and making terracotta figures. Archaeologists have also found beautiful seals in thousands with skillfully engraved markings. These seals represented different deities they believed in. We have also got standardization of life as shown by weights and measures. Import of precious stones from Badakhshan and other places in Central Asia making of very good beads of carnelian and other stones. We also get toys, noblemen, and beautiful ornamented ladies. We get new types of pots, new decorations on the pots, and most important is the beginning of the use of bull not only for the purpose of plowing, but also for the purpose of drying, and also for the purpose of carting. And we get wheel carts, we get plows at this time. The paintings show paper leaf, intersecting circle, black on red. And most important are the seals which bear inscriptions of that time, and also figures of animals, probably used for stamping on the bales that were exported outside. Most important is the sea route connection between the cities like Mohenjo-daro and Harappa through Arabian Sea to the Gulf states and to ancient Mesopotamia. On the land route side, we find connection with Central Asia, as well as we find colonization of these people in Gujarat and other parts of Western India. Knowing more about Mohenjo-daro is easy, for there is an exhibition in a museum near the historical site. There are seals, jewelry, toys, musical instruments, weapons, and painted pottery. Through this exhibition, we are able to have a profound knowledge of the happy, peaceful, and contented living style of the people of Mohenjo-daro. This mature phase of the Indus civilization is marked by the development of beautiful art and architecture, the building of great granary, the great bath in Mohenjo-daro, and the making of art pieces of stone, stone of noblemen, stone sculpture of meditative man, and also seals which represent the religion of the time. We have the horn deity surrounded by animals. We have the tree deity in which sacrifices of men are made, and other seals particularly showing the great bull. We also find their symmetry in which the dead are buried in graves. This civilization was based on industry and highly developed agriculture, which flourished on the basis of the fertility of the Indus soil. In spite of all these discoveries, historians have not been able to establish the causes of Mohenjo-daro's downfall and its eventual disappearance. The temples, grain stores, and houses had been falling down for many years, but no one repaired them. And finally, the city came to be buried. Perhaps there was a terrible disease or some other natural calamity that caused the fatal event. But unfortunately, later, about 1750 BC, the trade link with the outside world was cut. New migrants occupied Central Asia, hence imports were finished. They also occupied Western Asia and export finished. As a result, 
trade and industry declined. This led to the decline of the civilization of the Indus Valley, the decline of the cities such as Mohenjo-daro and Harappa. Earlier archaeologists talked about the Indus flood, they talked about the invasion, they talked about the decline or change of the climate. But the new opinion is that it is this decline of trade which led to the decline of the civilization. And we find both Mahanjadaro and Harappa coming to a gradual end and reversion to the older rural life. Interesting, wasn't it? And I'm sure you must have got a lot of information and knowledge about the people of Mahinjodaro and Harappa. So are you ready for the question answers drill? Question number one. What are the various benefits that people have from rivers? Good. Your answer is correct. Fishing, growing crops, traveling, trading, etc. Second question. What are the names of the two ancient cities of the Indus Valley Civilization? Very good. Your answer is correct. Mahinjodaro and Harappa. Third question. Who were the people who inhabited the cities of Mahinjodaro and Harappa? Correct. The Dravidians. Next question. What does the word Mohenjo-daro mean? What does the word Mohenjo-daro means? The word means a mound of dead. Next question. Who ordered the excavations of Mohenjo-daro and when? Correct. It was ordered by Sir John Marshall in 1922. Next question. How were the houses built? Good. They were built by baked bricks. Next question. The grain was considered the chief crop of Mahinjodaro. What else grew there? Your answer is correct. Rice, cotton and pulses. Very good. Last question. What are some of the suggestions that may seem reasons for downfall of Mahinjodaro? A slightly difficult question to answer. Okay, I'll give you the answer. The answer is outside invasion, terrible disease, a natural calamity or economic downfall may have been some of the reasons for the downfall of Mahinjodaro. With this, we come to the end of our listening comprehension activity that was the first part of the program you watched the film you answered a few questions and that finished the first part now we have language activity in language activity the first portion is pronunciation drill it is very important to pronounce a word correctly in every word there are some parts which are stressed the stress is on vowels for your pronunciation drill, we have chosen a few words from your textbook. Of course, stressing, laying the importance on the stress on each part of the word. Listen to the words carefully. Listen to the pronunciation carefully. First time, you will not repeat the words. But second time when the words are repeated, repeat after the words. So listen to the words carefully. Realize. Archaeology, antiques, excavations, neighboring, community, engraved, jewelry, calamity, buried, terracotta, realize, archaeology, 
antiques, excavations, neighboring, community, engraved, jewelry, calamity, buried, terracotta. Well, I'm sure you must have learned to pronounce these words correctly. Now we come to prepositions. Can you tell me what is a preposition? A preposition is a word that relates a noun or a pronoun which is its object to another word or the part of the sentence. For example, we shall leave at three o'clock. The children are playing behind the house. She has returned from the market. Sometimes the prepositions have a relationship of place, time or manner. Like, for example, you may leave at three o'clock. Please do the work in the correct manner. He takes interest in his work. She works with great interest. Now, let me see how much of the concept of preposition you have grasped. I will give you a few sentences. You have to fill in the blanks with suitable prepositions. Are you ready for that? Okay. First sentence. They walked dash the post office. In brackets, I'll give you three prepositions. You have to choose the correct one and fill in the blank. To, of, against. Your answer is correct. The correct sentence is, they walked to the post office. Second sentence, he is interested dash stamp collecting. The three prepositions are at, in, by. Now you tell me the correct preposition to fill in the blank. Very good. He is interested in stamp collecting. Next sentence. You must not talk dash the examination. The prepositions are during, to, about. You tell me which is the correct preposition to fill in the blank. Very good. Your answer is correct. You must not talk during the examination. The last sentence. We got the book dash the bookshelf. I'll give you three prepositions, from, under, over. Very good. The correct preposition would be from. So the correct sentence would be, we got the book from the bookshelf. With this, we come to the end of the second part of our language study, that was use of prepositions. In every language, there are words which can be substituted by another. Simply saying, two or three words might have similar meaning. For example, everlasting could be replaced by eternal or perfect can be substituted by complete. Because they represent the same meaning they are known as synonyms. Now I'll give you a few sentences with choice and I'll see how much you have understood about synonyms. The first synonym is casual. So the synonym for casual is usual, informal, common. The correct is informal. The synonym for mend is repair, sue, bind. The correct is repair. Next one, 
is strife. The synonym for strife is harsh, conflict, sharp. Conflict is the correct synonym. The synonym for ever is hair, every, always. The correct is always. Now, I will give you an exercise in which I'll give you a few words and for your homework, you have to find synonyms for these words. The words are surprised, skilled, probable, continues, destroyed, and decipher. So, with synonyms, we come to the end of our today's program. But before we say goodbye, let's quickly summarize and revise what we covered today. The first part was listening comprehension and you watched a documentary film on Mahinjodaro and you answered a few questions. In your language activity, you learned how to pronounce a few words chosen from your textbook. And you also learned how to use a preposition. And in the end, you learned what is a synonym. With this, we say goodbye to you till our next program.